Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. All right, so the January transfer window has slammed shut, and uh, that is that was weird. It was a bit like seeing Chris Brown pull out a chair for a lady in a restaurant. Just a bit weird. So I'm gonna take a look at the weirdest, strangest, just odd non-Premier League European transfers that happened in January. Right, let's go. Aaron Ramsey to Rangers. Yeah, this is mental. Who saw this coming? Aaron Ramsey at Rangers. Gordon Ramsay, maybe, playing at Ibrox of Soccer Aid, but this, two years ago, he was an in-demand Arsenal star. And now, he's playing in Scotland, playing in a field with John Lundstrom and Scott Arfield. It's a far cry from sharing a toilet with Ronaldo. He had Premier League offers on the table, so Scotland. At first, when I heard this, I nearly vomited the earwax out my nose, but the more I think about it, it's actually a good move. I mean, this is Aaron Ramsay. What is he actually going to achieve signing for Burnley? I mean, it seems mental, but he's walking into a dressing room that wins nearly every week, playing under a massive name in world football, and this is the key. Give it three weeks, and he'll be lining out in the West Fallon Stadion, testing himself in the field against Jude Bellingham. You know, with both of them once being teenage wonder kids. I mean, he wouldn't be able to taste frenetic European nights on loan at Turf Moor now, would he? Yes, this seems like a strange move, but I think the scenario. He wins the League of Rangers, goes on a European run, clinches the title in the Old Firm Derby in April, and maybe win the Scottish Cup before returning to Juventus, where he's impressed enough to maybe get a move to Everton or Newcastle, or, dream scenario, maybe even a return to Arsenal. And that's just via that sympathy day pass they've given to Jack Wilshere. Come on, Mikel Arteta played with Aaron Ramsey when he was boarding on World Class, so why not? So yeah, I think this is a pretty decent stepping stone. Hannah Benarfa to Leo. Hannah Benarfa is one of the most talented footballers on planet Earth, but I'm well aware that his career has mostly been residing in a waterlogged puddle for years. Probably because this is a fella who most likely wolves down a birthday cake every night before bed. Benarfa has the skill level of Messi, but honestly, he seems like the type who probably leaves training early to go home and play wee tennis with the dog. Honestly, the last time he was playing in England, he could probably be found licking salt out of the bathroom sink in any McDonald's at Hull. I mean, don't get me wrong, I utterly adore this man. I, I mean, as a footballer. And Christ, well, now I sound like some weird teenage girl who spends every night writing fan fiction in her diary about her marriage to Justin Bieber. But no, 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 as a footballer, okay, Benarfa is special, but sadly, he's actually only ever had one truly world-class season in his career, and I'm scoring 19 goals in one season for Nice. Six years ago. Since then, he's been frozen out of PSG, weirdly stormed out of Rennes, was released by Valladolid, and finally Bordeaux. And since then, these have been his options. Ex Newcastle ace Hannah Benafra, 34, to revive career in Tunisia after holding transfer talks with Esperance to Tunis. Ex Newcastle and France star Hannah Benafra negotiating free transfer to Romanian side Rapid Bucharesti. Tunisia and Romania. Christ above. I'm crazy. I mean, the, the poor lad looks so bereft of any actually half decent offers. It looked like he might even have to resort to getting a nighttime dancing gig in some rundown two star strip club in Stoke, right? No, instead, he somehow just signed for the Champions of France. Lance, Hannah Bernarfa is going to be playing against Chelsea in the Champions League. This is the fourth different club who he's played for while they were the reigning Champions of France. You know, after Lyon, Marseille, and PSG. That is mental. This guy was supposed to be a washed up donut, right? The French Fred Flintstone. But look at this. Nanny to Venezia. I thought Nanny was done. The man seemed to be finished in European football ever since he left Man United seven years ago. I mean, sure, he did well at Fenerbahce, but mostly plot like a wet stick of butter at Valencia, Lazio, and Sporting Lisbon. I mean, he spent the last three years in the MLS with Orlando City. He was in talks with Fluminense about a return to Brazil. So what in a pig's left nostril is this washed up 35-year-old sponge of a left winger doing in the Italian Serie A? To be fair, I know I said that Benarfa had the professionalism of a fat goldfish, but to be fair, Nanny, he's nearly 40, and as a Ronaldo-like six-pack. Yes, while on the pitch, he might be about as consistent as the hormones of a pregnant cat. But clearly he spends about six hours a day doing sit-ups at the gym. But yeah, I know he's moved house to Italy, but offer him a slice of pizza and it probably violently gets sick out his nose. But to be fair, the deal has gone well so far. He signed an 18-month contract and he's already set up a goal one minute into his debut against Empoli. But honestly, when Nani was winning the Champions League with Man United, Ethan Ampadu was an eight-year-old Welsh boy stuffed in the academy of Exeter City. But now, they probably both share a bowl of spaghetti together in the canteen. Just weird. Lorenzo Insigne to Tottenham. Remember when Oscar, at the peak of his Brazilian powers, ditched Chelsea to sign for Shanghai H25, scuttling off to the Chinese wilderness where we never heard from him again. Well, uh, until this window when he wants to sign for Barcelona, following in the same career path as Paulinho. But this, 
This is similar. During the summer, Lorenzo Insigne's stock was the highest it's ever been. 19 goals scored last season for Napoli. He was one of the stars of Euro 2020, chipping in with stunning goals against Turkey and Belgium uh, to eventually win the whole tournament with Italy. This guy had Premier League club sniffing around his ankles. And yet now, he's chosen to instead place his career in the hands of Bob Bradley. You know, that, that failed Swansea coach who looks like Super Nintendo Chalmers. You are joining a Canadian football club formed in 2005. Toronto FC, a club of only had 12 men managers in their history, and two of them were John Carver and Ryan Nelson. I mean, come on! I mean, Lorenzo, ask Jermaine Defoe if he had fun signing for Toronto mid-season. Ah, because I think to him, that club will forever be known as the one which cost him the 2014 World Cup with England, because Roy Hodgson was never going to jump on a plane to Canada. I mean, sure, Defoe was seduced by the idea of cash and getting to hang out with Drake on Friday nights, but in reality, he left just one year into a four-year deal to go and live in Sunderland. Ah! What does that tell you, Lorenzo? Insignia will join in July on a free transfer and he'll be the highest paid player in MLS history. Yes, even more than David Beckham, even more than Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he's on a four year deal worth 11 million pounds per season. He's gonna shake Canada down for nearly 50 million quid. But, but Lorenzo, some things are worth more than money. You could have had a one club legacy. Having joined Napoli in 2006 as a little boy, you could have been that club's Francesco Totti. And yet, you leave a 30 for bags of MLS cash. It's like ditching your childhood sweetheart to run off with Pamela Anderson. It's just a bit fake. You've sold out just like Sebastian Giovinco, but the weirdest part about the whole deal was that the Toronto president, Bill Manning, has said that after the Euro 2020 final, he just looked up the entire Italy national team on transfermarket.com to try and see which players are soon out of contract. Oh, it just all seems a bit tin pot. Robin Gossens in Milan. So for the last two years, Robin Gossens has been one of the most in-demand fullbacks on planet Earth, always linked with Chelsea in a 30 million pound deal, right? And yet, here he is at Inter Milan, now being hailed as a modern day Legolas. I mean, honestly, why is he holding a bow and arrow? This isn't archery morning at Club Med, it's just a bit weird. But listen, great signing for Inter Milan, the pincher from Atalanta. I mean, it's a brilliant upgrade on Ashley Young on that left wing, but he's been out with a hamstring injury since September, and he's joined on loan with an obligation to buy for just 23 million. Ah, what a strange bargain. Adama Traore to Barcelona. This is bizarre. Adama Traore's entire career is just one big confusing mess. On one hand, this is a guy who looks like football's answer to the Hulk. I mean, look at his biceps. He looks like he eats nothing but the carcass of a baby horse every morning for breakfast. I mean, puncture his veins with a needle and you're probably just a powdery protein milkshake running down his arms. And yet, he tells the world that he doesn't lift weights. I mean, what? The reason for his arms looking bigger than a couch, apparently it's just genetic. Okay, for whatever reason, he's choosing to just deny that he has a gym membership. When I mean, clearly he looks like someone able to bench press a caravan. He's also a footballer who two years ago was called up by both Spain and Mali in the same international break. Oh yeah. And this winger who has always been linked to monster clubs while frustrating his own fans to almost the brink of choosing to stab their eyes out with a fork. I mean, Ozzy, four years ago, he was linked with a mega move to Antonio Conte's Chelsea whilst match-going Millsborough fans were swearing blind that this brain-dead winger didn't have a football brain in his skull. I mean, this guy who scored eight goals in 123 Premier League matches for Wolves. The modern new faithful will tell you that he's got the goal scoring ability of a wet dog. We live in a world where Wolverhampton Wanderers, the club who used to idolize lights of Kenny Miller have chosen to stick him on the bench 12 times this season and yet here he is being unveiled as a Barcelona player. And let's not forget, this guy spent 11 years in the books of Barcelona. They know all about him. He's a player that they just sold Aston Villa for just 7 million pounds. I mean, six months before that, they were planning on selling him to Stoke. Clearly they thought he was about as much use as a burnt yogurt. He's been in England since 2015 and scored eight Premier League goals in seven years. Man, Doherty has scored more than that, and he's a goddamn full back. And that, that gets him a return to the new camp. I don't understand. Philippe Saicedo to Inter Milan. Inter Milan has some weird obsession with trying to fill the San Siro with as many past the footballers who once played in Manchester. Ozzy, the likes of Ashley Young, Alexander Kolarov, or even Jed and Dzeko. Who saw them signing for Inter Milan? But this is probably the most surprising one. Philippe Saicedo. He was a Manchester City player before they were rich, joining in January 2008, and hands down, the worst possible time. As soon as the likes of Rubinho and Tevez came through the door, the Ecuadorian centre forward very quickly, by comparison, looked about as appealing as a chewed up plastic bag. Uh, he's a journeyman striker who never really settled anywhere. He's never hit double digits in the league in a season since that loan to Levante in 2010. Yes, he was a bit of a super sub for Lazio under Simone Inzaghi, but he joined Genoa in August, and he had the chance to work under Andrei Shevchenko 
Shevchenko, learning under a former Ballon d'Or winner. But now, Saicedo's been an injury riddled love of candle wax. He's only started two games all season, scoring one goal. So a low move to Inter Milan? What? Thank God the volley to Leon. So I guess it's official then. Tanguy Dembele was a Tottenham disaster. I mean, this is always the nail in the coffin. When a footballer who seemingly outgrew their previous club, like Dembele did with Leon in 2019, earning a monster £55 million move to London, but now he's returning to his former club on loan with his tail between his legs. You know, it's a bit like when Robbie Keane returned to Tottenham from Liverpool, or when Timo Bakayoko wound up back on loan from Chelsea at Monaco. It's just embarrassing. And am I going to think that Nibali is a top class midfielder and still has the potential to be the French Jaya Torre? Comparisons to Bakayoko. Someone who looks like football's answer to Dennis Rodman, yes, but has the midfield presence of a Capri Sun. I think those comparisons are insulting because to me, Nibali is a potentially brilliant footballer. But yeah, a low move back to Leon with the option to purchase him in the summer for 65 million euros. So let, let me get this straight. Apparently 62 million euros was too much for Leon to turn down for their best player three years ago and yet now they're ready to pay that much for a guy who once ditched them the minute any club showed a flicker of interest in him. Ah, I don't know, I think that's a bit dodgy that. Andre Onana to Inter Milan. Okay, this is weird. Cameroon number one, Andre Onana, was part of the Ajax class of footballer linked with all the big clubs. Yes, Onana sounds like the opening lyrics that got off a Rihanna song, but this is a fellow who was strongly linked with replacing Kepa at Chelsea. Then he gets banned from the sport for nine months after apparently eating his wife's diet pills. Christ above, what are you, a dog? Did you not read the goddamn label? I thought his career right now would be lying dead in a ditch. Just completely forgotten about. Christ above, even in Holland. His ban was over by October and yet he spent the next seven matches on the bench. Aussie, in goalkeeping training at Ajax, Onana is competing with two goalies with a combined age of 77. And he still can't get in the first team? Aussie, I thought he was done. That his career was drowned at the bottom of a bowl of cornflakes. And yet, no, he's just signed a five year deal with Inter Milan. He's completed his medical. He's gonna join in July, where he's apparently going to dislodge Samir Handanovic from the net. Again, this is just a bit strange because Inter Milan, they, they don't really sign goalkeepers. Since 2001, they've only had three first choice number ones. Three number ones in 21 years. Francisco Toldo, Julio Cesar, and Handanovic. So, signing a forgotten man like Onana for a club who don't sign goalies it's weird. Anthony Martial to Sevilla. Don't get it wrong, this is a brilliant move for Anthony Martial. Finally, brushing off the cobbles at Old Trafford to play week in, week out in a La Liga title race. Anthony, Sevilla are four points by Real Madrid at the top of the league. Martial has the opportunity, the capability to, in the blink of an eye, become an instant Sevilla club legend. If he helps them to win their first titles in 1946. But it's just a bit weird that Man United would even let him leave on loan. Doesn't look so clever now, does it? Sergio Oliveira to Roma. So here we've got Porto's answer to Bruno Fernandes, right? 29-year-old Sergio Oliveira, who scored 20 goals from central midfield last season. And yet, now, he signed for Roma on loan until the end of the season, with an option to make the move permanent for 13 million euros. Listen, I know he's not exactly a world superstar name, and two years ago, he was a subject of interest from Nottingham Forest, which honestly probably scared him stiff, because being offered the chance to partner a ginger hop like Jack Colback in midfield, he must have felt like shoving a pine cone up his nose. So I get why he's jumped at the chance to play under a football legend like Jose Mourinho. Christ above. When Jose was having Porto win the Champions League in 2004, this fella was a 12 year old boy in the academy. He probably had posters of Jose hugging Deco on his walls. So I get what's in it for him. But in the same window where you've lost Luis Diaz to Liverpool, why are you agreeing to loan out your best midfielder? I mean, when you bottle the Premier League title race and get dumped out of Europe by Lazio, you've only yourselves to blame. Pierre Macabamiang to Barcelona. Right, so we've got Pierre Macabamiang. Someone who always promised his granddad he'd one day play for Real Madrid. I mean, I, I guess, I, I guess Barcelona will have to do, right? This is weird because it's done. Arsenal have officially dumped their captain for free. I mean, is this a good signing for Barcelona? No, it, it just shows how far their standards have fallen as a club. Because this transfer, it would be like a Barcelona had signed Thierry Henry in 2010, which is actually when they dumped him like a stale sausage sandwich to New York Red Bulls. And you are replacing a 33 year old striker with a heart issue for a 32 year old striker with an apparent heart issue. It's all just a bit confusing and sad. And poor old looked at young. He's probably now crying into a glass of orange juice. Alikia Mangala the sand at the end. What's the point? Anyway, that's it for this episode. What do you think? All right, let me know what has been the weird transfers that have happened this month. Let me know in the comments below. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.